happy day, everyone. I'm sorry, I had to steal that from Andrew. We're still working on our intros. <laughs> Welcome to Creator Toolbox. This is a ServiceNow web series for you developers, builders, people of all skill levels to show you some new and interesting topical uh, elements of the platform, capabilities you can use. They could be deeper into coding, they could be no code, they could be somewhere in between on that spectrum. My name is Chuck Tomasi, Senior Developer Advocate at ServiceNow, and uh, I am really happy that Brad is here because he's going to be doing the, uh, the topic today. Tell us, give me, well, do your intro, then tell us the topic. I'm getting excited and getting ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Brad Tilton. I am a Developer Advocate with a Developer Program here at ServiceNow. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about upgrades in Quebec and then a little bit about a, an upgrade feature that came out in Paris, but we couldn't use it in Paris because it involves upgrading to the next release. Yeah, that's that's that was the catch when we were doing the demos. Everybody's like, can I get this in Orlando? Like, no, you have to upgrade to Paris to get this. So we're doing a step back because we're getting ready to upgrade some of our instances in the developer program to Quebec, and this is really going to give us good insights and save us some time. I mean, that's all everybody wants is, right, let's make that upgrade cycle shorter and shorter so that we can get to Quebec or Rome or San Diego even quicker. So anything else to uh, announce before we get going? I don't think so. Uh, today's show, we're going to talk about upgrade preview from Paris. Then we'll talk about some of the uh, optimizations we've made to uh, upgrades. Uh, unfortunately, they're not very demoable, so we'll just kind of have to talk through them. Uh, and then we'll take a look at some of the small changes uh, that have been made to the Upgrade Center in Quebec. Um, but if we're ready, I can go ahead and share my screen and we can start by taking a look Absolutely. at the Upgrade Preview, I think. Got it. I'm sharing correctly. All right. Uh, so to get started in here, uh, one of the things that uh, we released in the Paris release is the ability to run uh, this upgrade preview. Uh, and what it does is it kind of previews the new upgrade uh, before you actually run the upgrade uh, in uh, in that uh, in that instance. So. You know, this is really helpful, especially, I think, for customers that don't have a lot of instances. If you only have, you know, three instances in your stack, uh, it's it can be kind of difficult to find a time, you know, find the right time to start upgrading, you know, your dev or your test instance to take a look at the release um, and, and all of those things. So you really want to keep that cycle as short as possible so it doesn't interrupt your development cycles. Uh, so the upgrade preview uh, that came out, uh, we are looking at uh, the upgrade preview page. Uh, and so it is under Upgrade Center. Uh, we released a few different things uh, in Upgrade Center. Uh, I think all of these, I think Upgrade Center as a whole came out in, in uh, Paris. Yep. Yep. And I love uh, how it says Paris Patch 4B or Quebec EA Hotfix 2. Easy to read. You're not going into stats.do and going, 2021-02-12 underscore some time stamp. Like, what release is this even? Somewhere in there, it might say patch 4B. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so this is, uh, I have already uh, previewed this release because I wasn't quite sure how long it was going to take, and it did take a little <laughs> bit longer than I would want to do live on the show. It was, I mean, it was only a few minutes, but uh, that's a little too much uh, time for me to try to fill. You by pulled talking. a cooking show on us. I, I did, <laughs> uh, but the cool thing about this is that uh, you can really use uh, any, uh, you know, any release that's past your current release that you have access to upgrade to. So this could be a patch or a hot fix. It could be a full new release. Um, but, uh, you know, for this one, we're going from Paris to the latest version of Quebec, uh, which this, you know, this will change very soon uh, when patch one. Comes oh, that's out. handy. So because we always get questions from customers. Can I upgrade from, say, New York? to Quebec or New York to Paris, you could test it out and see what that impact is. And it may get to be where, hey, you know what? We just don't have time to address all these things. We have to go to Paris instead of Quebec. And then in three months, 
we can look at Quebec again. Yeah, yeah. So lots of lots of options there. Uh, so you know, I have some big uh, some some big uh, I guess cards here, uh, which is telling me you are on Paris Patch Four B, uh, and we are previewing uh, Quebec EA. Uh, and if I had an upgrade that I had scheduled, it would tell me when that was here. So, you know, the, this is a dashboard. I'm supposed to have all the information I need on this dashboard. Um, so it created this preview and we're going to come back to the preview details. Uh, but one of the cool things uh, is it's giving me some more information about this release down here. Uh, where I can uh, view the uh, fixed problem. So if we open this up, uh, this is docs and it is uh, going to give me the uh, PRB release notes. Uh, so I have access to that down here. Uh, and it's going to also let me visit the known error portal. Uh, so this will log me into uh, support.servicenow.com. Uh, where uh, I can see kind of all the known errors. I'm not going to log in because it also gives me other things on the page. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I can see a lot of stuff in high, so I'm not going to show that on the Hang show Hang on a here. sec, Brad. Go back to that first yeah. link. I noticed something. It said uh, view feed. Yeah, it says personalized PRB. Is that, so that is taking into account, apparently, I didn't know this even existed, but it knows where you're starting from and where you're going to. So it knows which PRBs to include on this. Yeah. And so the cool thing about that is if you look at your personalized release notes. Oh, come on. Really? It's going to tell you uh, this is for release notes upgrading from Paris to Quebec. So if I was upgrading from Orlando, this is a recent change we made to Docs. If I was upgrading from Orlando to Quebec, it would actually take all of the features in Paris and Quebec and put them together into a combined consolidated release notes. And that was a big ask we had from customers See, uh, yeah, because yeah. there are still a lot of customers that skip a release and they don't mm -hmm. want to have to look at all the Paris stuff and then look at all the Quebec stuff. So this just combines them together uh, if I was skipping a release. Wow, that gets one of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah our our team uh, our product team for upgrades has really put in a, a lot of a, a lot in these last few releases both in the instance uh on high in the docs sorry not on high on support uh on on the docs and then i yeah i think we may have something coming in the in the customer success center pretty soon as well that is around kind of upgrades and, and personalizing that so you know it's really all about personalizing this uh, so that you don't have to hunt down all of the things that are going to affect you uh, and making these upgrades quicker and easier and pulling all of the data you need into one spot. Where was this when I was a customer? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> when uh, they would release the, uh, you know, the, the new release notes on the wiki and uh, you just, you know, I, I'd block out four hours and just read through the release notes on the wiki. <laughs> four hours i was getting upgrades and then finding out what i just got <laughs> like, oh hey the, the prod was upgraded i wonder how that happened <laughs> those were the days i do remember just taking an upgrade in prod and, and uh you know seeing how it went all right so the next thing uh, really the you know the the big value here um is the uh the skipped list predictions uh, so, you know, one of the big parts of the upgrade is when you upgrade, there are maybe things that you have changed uh, that uh, are going to end up getting skipped because we don't want to overwrite any customizations you've made. Uh, and so that's a really big part of any upgrade is kind of reviewing the skip list and what got skipped and do I want to, you know, accept the remote change and, and things like that, uh, where this is going to let me preview that. Uh, so I can kind of get a head start on, you know, what it is that uh, that might be affected. And I can kind of look at that before we actually do the upgrade. Mm -hmm. You know, so if your upgrade is, you know, maybe your company has some pretty strict uh, rules on when you can upgrade and how often you can do that, uh, you know, you could take a look at this now, even though you're not going to upgrade until, you know, June and, uh, and ha have a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. 
Uh, and then at the very bottom of this page, uh, it, it's telling you uh, your ATF results. So it's actually looking at your most recent uh, ATF run and then telling you how much how much of it passed or failed. Uh, this is really important. Uh, this is a, you know, if you are using ATF, uh, you need to make sure all your tests are they all pass before you upgrade, because if you have a test and it fails before you upgrade, then it's not going to be helpful to you after you upgrade, because you're not going to know whether the upgrade made it fail or something else made it fail. Good point. So good point. You need you a good baseline. Your, yeah, you want all your tests to pass. And then when you upgrade the ones that fail, you know that they have failed due to something that changed in the upgrade. So that, you know, this is really, um, you know, ensuring that you get the value uh, you need out of ATF. Uh, all right, so let's look at the preview details. So I can get to this, you know, I could click into these individual records here, uh, but I, I like the preview details mm -hmm. uh, because it's going to show me this preview. Um, you know, this is where we get into the, uh, the dates and everything uh, that you were talking about, Chuck. Um, but, you know, it shows me how long that preview took. Uh, oh, it, it only took a minute. It seemed like longer than this, uh, but that's probably <laughs> because I'm really impatient. Um, and then we have these four uh, predicted skip records. Um, and so you can, you know, these are things where I think we can click into it. And, uh, you know, we have some similar options around the customizations. I, I haven't actually played with this and then upgraded, um, but uh, I am. So I guess these are your choices. You can either revert this to how it was before you customized it, or you can say retain customization. I don't know what this does uh, to, the, uh, to the skip list after you upgrade. So if I were to say retain customization, you know, does that skip? Is it already triaged after I upgrade? Uh, I'm not sure what that looks like. We'll have to figure that out at some point. Um, but you know, basically, I've got my two options. Do I want to keep this? Do I want to? Uh, do I want to revert it? Mm -hmm. All right, and that's uh, I think about it uh, as far as the preview goes. Uh, do you notice anything you want to call out before we move on to? Uh, I have another instance that's a cloned version of this one uh, that uh, has already been upgraded, and so we can kind of take a look at some of the newer things uh, in that instance. So the the way that I understand it is, and maybe this comes into your next instance, is when you address those skip changes, because this that was telling you the preview of what it's going to skip. So you can see what the impact is. But now when you go to the other instance, you're going to start addressing those. Do I want to keep it? Do I want to... Correct? Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. when you have that skip uh, uh, VTB, uh, the upgrade center VTB. Yeah. That's again. what I was looking forward to. Yeah. So let's uh, get out of some of this stuff. Any good... Uh... Uh, they're all good comments. Do we have any uh, questions? <laughs> oh, Andrew's on. He says, happy day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we are going to take a look at uh, a, an instance that was upgraded. Uh, so this is... Uh, <laughs> happens to be Andrew's instance, by the way. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Uh, this is a clone of our uh, dev program stack. Um, so uh, this is our upgrade summary report. So if I look at Upgrade Center and we look at the upgrade monitor, uh, this is what, what I'm going to see here. So the upgrade monitor is going to show you a lot of things during your upgrade. Uh, I wasn't uh, brave enough to try to make an upgrade happen during the show. Um, that, that seemed like something I, I would probably not get the timing right. Um, so <laughs> this is what it looks like after your upgrade is completed. We actually did this upgrade uh, you know, a month and a half ago. What was the fastest upgrade you've ever seen? Oh, that's a good question. I haven't I haven't been closely involved in an upgrade in like 10 years, I think. Uh, so, you know, when whenever I upgrade my my own instances, I, you know, I don't really pay attention to it usually happens closely. in the middle of the night sometime and you yeah. get the email in the morning that says it's done. I, I and, and what's nice now is you know, at least as an admin, you can log in and it will update if I understand it, it'll update the nodes yeah. individually. So you can keep using Paris, 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 Paris until all the nodes are done and it goes, okay, hey, guess what? With our, we're all on Quebec, here we go. 
Um, so it's no longer this outage window, which I think is really nice. Um, I think the fastest one I saw was an hour, maybe an hour and a half. Okay. Really depends on how many plugins you've got, how many, um, how many apps you've got running. I mean, if you're doing ITSM and ITBM and ITOM and CSM, you've got this heavier system and you've got you know, 16 nodes out there, it's going to take a while. Now, a lot of ours for demo purposes are scaled way back, so they'll go a little bit quicker. Yeah, the plugins is a good point. And we're going to take a look at uh, something that we have uh, that we have added in terms of how long it takes each of your plugins uh, to upgrade. Uh, so before we get into what's actually on this page, uh, I, I do want to talk about something that we can't demo, uh, but that the, our, our teams put a lot of uh, energy into uh, this release, which is uh, optimizing the upgrade speed. Uh, so they've done some things around, you know, what actually happens during the upgrade uh, to make it faster. And they did a lot of testing and, and it has actually sped up that process. I don't you know. It's it's enough to be noticeable, I think. Um, but uh, there are some things uh, and, and I'll get into a lot of details, but it's basically just things like um, there were a lot of inserts happening uh, as, as far as like logging what's what's happening during an upgrade. And a lot of that has been moved uh, to a um, like a cleanup job that happens after the upgrade mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, your upgrade can finish. And then this cleanup job runs and, and, you know, does a lot of that logging for you so that, you know, the upgrade actually finishes quicker. I don't know what uh, release it was, but several I want to say it was a couple of years ago that they made a policy to say no table alters in minor releases, in patch releases, in mm -hmm. hotfixes. And that really cut down the, the upgrade time. In fact, if you, if you watch the status bar, you can actually watch an upgrade happen. Uh, it will say, hey, I'm installing plugins, and then whoop, it skips right over this entire section. So mm -hmm. they've sped up the upgrades considerably by just considering things of that nature. Interesting. I, I don't think I had uh, realized that. That's cool. Um, one of the other things that it optimized is uh, like fixed scripts with our plugins. Uh, you know, the way that those uh, run now is a lot more efficiently when they run during the upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, so those are just some optimizations. Hopefully you notice uh, that it's gone a little faster uh, in, in upgrading uh, to Quebec. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so performance optimizations in terms of the upgrade is one thing. Um, another change is the, uh, database upgrade log, uh, has been split out into its own file. So it used to be a part of your overall, uh, syslog file, uh, and it's now split out into its own file and you can access that, uh, by going to your upgrade history. And then uh, this is the one, and then clicking into that upgrade record, mm -hmm. and it's now an attachment on that upgrade record. And so that's that's your log file of just the upgrade. Uh, and so that's that's pretty helpful if you are just wanting to take a look at uh, you know the upgrade log itself, uh, because those you know those overall uh, log files can get pretty large, uh, and uh, you know working with them and poking through them to find what you need uh, can be pretty difficult if you're only looking for something in the upgrade. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the upgrade history, don't we also see um, apps push through the app repo? Uh, so I thought that's where I saw that because I was, I was upgrading an app and I went, oh, I can, I can, you know, when did I go from 1.1 to 1.2 to 2.1 and so on and so forth. And I thought that was in the upgrade history. So one of the things that we have changed in Quebec is it's actually we've split out some of those uh, some of those things into their own um, menu. So previously, I believe, what was the name of that? Uh, there was a upgrade. Was it system applications? Uh, there is one under system application. I'm trying to remember what the other one was called uh upgrade history system diagnostics yeah so in this upgrade history you would have all sorts of 
you know, all, all sorts of things. Uh, and one of the things we've done is we've actually split out, I think if we look at history, uh, we have added three new um, app menu modules. Uh, so one of them is my application import history under oh. system applications. Uh, so I don't have any under here. So this is importing apps from source control. Uh, I have not done that in, uh, in Andrew's instance. And then another one is uh, we have a plugin installation history, right? So we're basically, you know, filtering these are all the things, same list. <laughs> yeah, they're all they're all things that are already there. We're just, yeah. you know, making it easier to get uh, to some of these. And then what's the other one? Update set commit history uh, is the other one that uh, is now is now there. Uh, so we've split that out just to kind of make things a little easier. Um, you know, uh, most of these are based on, you know, customer feedback and, and uh, you know, how can, how can customers do things a little bit quicker and, you know, make these upgrades uh, more smooth. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's very handy that's... because a lot of times you're going, who did this and when having logs of that and easy to find is nice. So if we go back to our upgrade um, upgrade monitor here, uh, we can see you know how long it took, and then we have some our same three links. Uh, so these are still there; they were in the preview before. Now they're in the upgrade monitor. If I want to go take a look at you know what's what's new in these upgrades, I have similar lists here. Uh, the numbers don't match exactly, and I'm going to say that's because I believe the uh, the uh, instances, the uh, versions are slightly different, and this is an older clone, uh, so the uh, the instances didn't line up exactly. So he may not have been on Paris Patch Four B. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So some all of that may have been uh, a little bit different. So we have eleven instead of four. Perfectly uh, realistic scenario for customers too. Yeah. Uh, so we have the skipped record. We'll get into that VTB uh, in a minute, but I want to show. So these are all, you know, things that haven't changed from Paris, uh, where we're looking at, you know, skipped records by product, uh, code changed and unchanged. Um, you know, I, I don't have any uh, ATF uh, tests in this instance. Uh, and then we have uh, individual node upgrades, uh, which mm -hmm. is helpful. So this is where it's going to tell me, you know, here's the nodes that are running. We have some customers with many nodes. Uh, this instance only has the two. Um, and then, then we have down at the bottom here, we've got our top 10 fixed scripts by duration. So it's going to tell me, you know, how long each of these took. Um, if I had schema changes, uh, how long those took. And then this new one is the top 10 uh, plugins by duration. So these are, you know, your plugins uh, that were uh, upgraded. And we can go in and actually take a look at, so, you know, this uh, Slack uh, plugin took uh, about two minutes, uh, it says, or maybe it was more like two and a half minutes. Um, but uh, it's also going to tell me each of the plugin files uh, that were that were upgraded and nice. how long each of them took, and uh, it they they make a big point to say that this number is not necessarily all of these numbers added up because there are some you know efficiencies and optimizations that are happening uh, where hopefully I think this this goes a little quicker than just adding all of these numbers up. And if I recall, that list also shows you the um, the plugins that are activated. Because sometimes when you go from Paris to Quebec, it's like, hey, we're going to turn on these features by default mm. for customers that are upgrading. So you can see not only what was updated, but what was activated as well. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, so these were these were already here. This top ten plugins by duration is new in Quebec. Uh, so let's uh, let's take a look at the BTB. This is not a new feature. It was already um, already there starting in Paris, uh, but it is a good way uh, to take a look at and uh, triage uh, your uh, skipped records. This is probably the coolest VTB I've ever seen. <laughs> Mine are so simple. They just have vertical uh, yeah. lanes. <laughs> 
Yeah, so this is uh, stacked by the state or it's uh, uh, grouped by the state and then we're stacking on the priority. So it's automatically set a priority for these. So we've got two and then I guess we have another nine that are priority uh, five here. So I guess we can look into one of these uh, published update set UI action. Um, I always forget how to work VTBs because I don't, I don't. You're not just dragging out. them around or are you assigning? What do you want uh, to do? Oh yeah, yeah, we can assign them. So I could say, you know, hey, I took a look at this. We can review it. Um, did it change the state? Yeah, it changed the yep. state for me. I could assign it to, uh, let's assign it to Andrew because he's not here. <laughs> um, you miss so. the meeting, you get the action items. <laughs> assigned to Andrew to take a look at. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's no checklist. So yeah, the VTB for uh, for your skips is here. Uh, this is you know a thing that we had added uh, in Paris. Andy dandy. And I think I'm at my the end of my you know list of things that has changed as far as upgrades go uh, in the Quebec release. Uh, is there anything we haven't really looked at? Don't think so. Uh, oh, there is a thing. Um, I mentioned the um, the upgrade log uh, being uh, extracted now. That is a thing. I guess this is just VTB. Uh, there is a property uh, where you can toggle that, where you can say, "Hey, I don't want." You know, I don't want the upgrade log to be separated. Um, and I believe there was something else in this release and I should have written it down. Uh, but uh, there are properties to control a lot of these changes if for whatever reason you didn't want uh, one of these changes. Okay. I like going to the upgrade monitor while the upgrade is happening. That's where you see the <laughs> yes. fun status lines. Yes. One of, the, one of the few status bars I enjoy watching. Like, how many plugins are there? It's like I just did a, a quick Android update on my phone and it's a, installing 39 of 412. Wow, <laughs> that's right. A lot of stuff in here. Yeah. When I update my iPhone, it just tells me you have 87 minutes left or however long it takes. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I will uh, stop sharing if there's nothing else. All righty. Well, thank you. Uh, I almost said Andrew. <laughs> thank you, Brad. That's right. We're interchangeable. <laughs> uh, quick announcements. We do have a Tech Now coming up on the 23rd about App Engine Studio. So join us as Valerie Myers Christensen and Chris Haas, two of our superstar uh, product managers around AES, will be joining us and showing that off. Next week on the 17th, I do have a podcast on Breakpoint coming out with Chris Haas. We recorded that yesterday, so we're going through the final edits and review to get that released to you. So this is Upgrade Week. Join us Friday for Live Coding Happy Hour, where we will be doing Instant Scan. So that's going to be interesting because this is a product that has sort of been behind the scenes and, and a little what would you call it, non-touch, not high touch, not low touch, it was, it was no touch. Uh, you yeah. couldn't trigger it without involving ServiceNow previously, and now that is at your disposal. So this is going to be another one of those wow moments when you get to use Instant Scan to not only scan for potential issues before you upgrade, but as you do your deployment. So look for that on Live Coding Happy Hour. Uh, there's a... Sao Paulo meetup on Thursday. So dev meetup there. We have any other dev meetups coming up that I should, I think Utah's got one coming up soon. Yep. Um, oh, check that was the, the other check, one that I was thinking of. Check the events page. <laughs> go, go to the developer portal, developer.servicenow.com, connect events, all of them will be there. So looking forward to seeing you at some of those. They're virtual now, so you don't have to travel soon. That's right. 
if you find a if you find a dev meetup that looks interesting go ahead and join it you know you don't you don't have to be in the same location one of the you know silver linings for not being able to do these in-person dev meetups you bet well with that we're going to uh, give you a short one they don't all have to be an hour on this show <laughs> thank you brad and we will talk to everybody real soon be safe and uh, see you again shortly. Take care, everybody. Bye.